Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget standards for modern decks, and this week we're taking a look at a modern deck known as Death and Taxes. It's a mono-white aggro deck with a lot of disruptive elements, and one of those disruptive elements is Leonin Arbiter, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two creature that says players can't search libraries, but a player can pay 2 generic mana at any point to search their library for the turn. So the idea behind Leon and Arbiter is that it punishes deck with a lot of fetch lands. We can also combine it with cards like Path to Exile, which usually the opponent gets to search a basic land, but with an Arbiter in play if they don't have two mana up, they may not be able to search. We can also combine Leon and Arbiter with cards like Ghost Quarter, which is a land that can destroy one of the opponent's lands. Normally they get to search up a basic land, but again with the Arbiter in play they may not be able to. And another land destruction card in the deck is Tectonic Edge, which can destroy one of the opponent's non-basics if they have uh, four or more lands in play. So we can definitely tax the opponent's mana base in a way. The other way we can tax their mana is with Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, a 2-mana two 2-1 two legendary creature with first strike that makes non-creature spells cost 1 generic mana more to cast. And of course we're playing very few non-creature spells in our deck, so it's mostly going to affect the opponent. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have a very important card in the deck, Ether Vile, a 1-mana artifact that lets us sneak our creatures into play, so every turn we get to add a counter on the Ether Vile if we want to, we can tap the Vial to put a creature from our hand into play, with convert mana costs corresponding to the number of counters on the Ether Vile, so this is a way for us to play our creatures, play around counter spells as well, since the creature will not be able to get countered, and that way we free up our mana to use cards like Ghost Quarter and Tectonic Edge. And next up we have four copies of Path to Exile, which is the removal spell of choice in this deck, and also synergizes nicely with Leon and Arbiter. Next up we have four copies of Thraben Inspector, a 1-mana one 1-2, one that when it enters the battlefield we get to investigate, so we get a clue token that we can sacrifice by paying 2 mana to draw a card. So the Thraben Inspector synergizes nicely with some of the flicker effects in the deck, so if we don't have any other targets, we can just flicker the Thraben Inspector to get an additional clue token to draw some more cards. And since we are an Ether Vile deck, we might have some leftover mana to sacrifice those clues rather than having to spend the mana to cast our creatures. We also have two copies of Dried Militant, a 1 mana 2 1, that says if an instant or sorcery card would be put into a graveyard, it gets exiled instead. So it's a very nice effect against Storm decks, for example, which rely on their graveyard. And uh, also just a nice beatdown creature to deal some early damage with. Next up we have two copies of Smuggler Sculptor, a 2 mana vehicle that's a 3-3 with flying, and the crew cost is only 1, so it's pretty easy to crew the copter, can even crew it with a Thraben Inspector for example, and whenever the copter attacks or blocks we get to draw a card and then discard a card, so it helps us improve our draw, maybe get rid of some extra lands we don't need, or if we already have an Aether Vial in play, we can discard additional copies. Then of course we have our four copies of Leon and Arbiter, which is one of the more important cards in the deck. We also have two copies of Selfless Spirit, a 2 mana 2 1 flyer, that we can sacrifice at any point to give our creatures indestructible until end of turn, so this helps us protect our more valuable creatures, or against sweeper effects, the Selfless Spirit can also be very valuable. Then our three copies of Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, which is a legendary creature, which is why we only have the three copies instead of the full four. Next up we have four copies of Blade Splicer, a 3 mana 1 1, that when it enters the battlefield we get a 3 3 golem creature token that's also an artifact, and Blade Splicer says golem creatures we control have first strike, so that's a lot of power and toughness for just 3 mana, and Blade Splicer also makes for a great flicker target, as we get an additional golem creature token when the Blade Splicer re-enters the battlefield. We also have a 1 of copy of Athalia, Heretic Athar, as an additional taxing effect, as a 3 mana 3 2 legendary creature with first strike, and Thalia says creatures and non basic lands, the opponent controls enter the battlefield tapped, so this is another way to punish the opponent for playing a lot of non basic lands, and their creatures entering the battlefield tapped also helps us get in extra damage. Then we have 4 copies of Flicker Wisp, another essential card in the deck. A very tricky card that combines very nicely with Aether Vile as a 3 mana 3 1 with flying, and when Flicker Wisp enters the battlefield, exile another target permanent and return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So if you activate Aether Vile in your own end step and put a Flicker Wisp into play, you can actually exile a permanent until the opponent's end of turn, so it will be gone for almost an entire turn cycle 
which is very powerful. And of course, you can also just flicker your own stuff, like a blade splicer or a Thraben inspector. There's a lot of tricky things you can do with Flicker Wisp, and it's a very useful card, besides just being a three power flyer that can help us kill the opponents. And then we also have three copies of Restoration Angel, which is very similar to Flicker Wisp, a four mana 3 4 with flying, and also has flash, so we can play that in some speed. And when the angel enters the battlefield, we get to flicker a non angel creature we control, so that's another way to re trigger Blade Splicer or Thraben Inspector, or maybe save a creature from a removal spell. Then going over the mana base, we have a one-off copy of Iganjo Castle, which can prevent two damage dealt to a legendary creature, so combines nicely with our two Thalias. Of course, our four copies of Ghost Corridor to combine with Leonin Arbiter. 14 planes, and then four Tectonic Edge for more land destruction. Then going over the sideboard, we have a one-off copy of Burnt and Forge Tender, to maybe counter Anger of the Gods type sweepers, or just uh, red removal spells. Two copies of Relic of Progenitus as Graveyard Hate, a Blast Alliance, which we can bring in against Burn decks or Bogle decks, a Disenchant for artifacts or enchantments, two Damping Sphere against Tron and Storm decks, a Phyrexian Revoker, which is also pretty versatile, can name Planeswalkers or other cards to prevent their activated abilities from being activated. We've got two Rest in Peace as more Graveyard Hate, two Core Firewalker against Burn decks, as well as a Kitchen Things which we can also just bring in against more controlling decks where maybe we want to take out Path to Exile. And then two Marin Crusader, which shines against black-green decks, of course, as it has protection from those colors. So that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, and the sand seems keepable. We've got a lot of early action with uh, double one-drop, double copter. So hopefully we can find a third land for Thalia in time, but otherwise we still have a decent curve. All right, Inquisition is going to see a pretty redundant hand since we have double copter, double one drop. Takes the Thraben Inspector, so we'll be playing the Militant on one. Or, well, I guess we drew another Inspector, so given that they took the Inspector, I'm going to assume it's a better play than the Militant. So turn two, we can play a Copter. And a Smallpox, okay. I see what we're uh, trying to do here. So we have to discard a card from our hands. I guess we can discard a Copter, although we might not even get to three mana for Thalia since we also have to sacrifice a land. Sacrifice a creature and sacrifice a land. So we might be up against a sort of eight rack variant. Ooh, Ether Vial is a nice draw since that can uh, let us play out all our cards with just one land or maybe even no land. Do still need a second land for the Copter, so hopefully we still draw a second land at some point. So we'll put a counter on either Vile, find a path to exile. So no reason to run out the Militant main phase, I don't think, so we can end of turn Vile the Militant in. And path to exile is probably not going to be the best draw here against an 8-track deck as we see Shrieking Affliction make an appearance. So end of turn will activate the Vile, put in Dried Militant. Untap, and we'll tick up the vial. So let's try and attack for two. And then we'll uh, vial in the selfless spirit end of turn, most likely. And another nice thing about either vial is that now we don't have to play out lands that we draw. So that way we get to keep our hands nicely stocked for the Shrieking Affliction. Alright, so our opponent is casting another smallpox, so we could path to exile our own Dried Militant to still get a land, which I don't think I mind here. So we do lose an extra card from our hand, but I think getting a, an extra land here is going to be pretty important, since we're going to get the Smuggler Sculptor down, and then we'll discard Thalia, since I don't think we want to put Vile up to three counters. At least not yet. So now we can vial in the spirits to keep some pressure up and then hopefully find a land for the copter. We do lose some life from the Shrieking Affliction unfortunately, but we'll keep the vial on two for now. All right, we drew a land, so we can play out the copter here if we want to. So let's attack for two first. So let's play the copter and then next turn we can sacrifice a clue. Opponent says go. So we'll take some damage from the Affliction. We could have sacked a clue in response to the trigger, but uh, we were still only going to have one card in hand, so that didn't matter. I think we just uh, leave Vile at two for now. We drew Restoration Angel, so now we have a few options. We can start taking up the Vile, 
or we can loot it away with the copter. First things first, I think we sacrifice a clue to get some more info. All right, we found a planes, which I don't think we're playing out here. So let's uh, crew the copter with the spirit. And uh, let's say the opponent has fatal push, we can just sacrifice a spirit if we want to. One of the better cards we can find here is maybe a blade splicer or a flicker wisp, something just that puts a, a body in play that can help us pressure the opponent. Thalia would also be pretty good since some of the opponent's discard spells cost two mana. So let's attack with the copter. And we'll discard the vial. So your opponent's at 11, we'll say go, and then next turn probably put the vial on three counters. Raven's Crime is gonna make us discard. We'll discard the planes for now. All right, it's on tap. We'll put vial up to three and draw an Arbiter. All right, so now I think we just play the Arbiter, crew the Copter and attack for five. And our opponent scoops it up. All right, onto sideboarding against a track. Don't have a ton of uh, great cards in this matchup. We have a Disenchant, a Kitchen Finks, and Mirren Crusader is probably okay. Path to Exile seems pretty weak. Opponent could have something like a Pack Rat as part of a transformative sideboard plan, but usually they don't have any creatures beside Mutavolt, and we have plenty of answers for Mutavolt with our land destruction. All right, so this is one of those uh, tricky hands, since if our opponent makes us discard either vial, this hand is not really functional. I think I'm willing to risk it, since not all of the opponent's discard is a uh, targeted discard. All right, Shrieking Affliction turn one, so Aether Vial is good to go. And in blank, there's not gonna be many ways for the opponent to get rid of the Aether Vial. So I think we run out the Ghost Quarter. Or maybe that was wrong. Maybe we should have played the Tectonic Edge, since if they do small poxes, we would rather have a Ghost Quarter as opposed to Tectonic Edge, since the opponents mostly got Swamps and Mutavolts, and then the opponent's probably not gonna have four or more lands for us to use the Tectonic Edge on but it's probably not gonna matter too much. So let's put Vial up to one, draw Blade Splicer. I think we're still playing out our land here, since if we draw planes, we might be able to both put something in play with the Vial and play a creature. But for now we'll say go, and then end of turn we can Vial in the Dried Militant. Don't know yet if we're playing out our third land, unless it's a planes. All right, opponent with a third Swamp, so Leon and Arbiter is not gonna be too effective here. Put in Dried Militants. Untap, put another counter on the vial. All right, we found a planes, so we can play a blade splicer here if we want to, or we can vial in Arbiter, keep up Ghost Quarter, or vial in Athalia, which we could do main phase just to make our opponent's spells more expensive. But they haven't missed a land drop yet, so I don't know how important that will be. I guess for now we can just attack for two. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play it out uh, more patiently here. So I'm not gonna run out a Blade Splicer here, instead I'm gonna wait an extra turn and just use the Vial. All right, a small pox. So if that'll work, discard Tectonic Edge, sacrifice Militants, and sacrifice Tectonic Edge. And again, end of turn, I think we put in Athalia. Let's see, if we put in the Arbiter, then if our opponent tries to Fatal Push, we can get rid of one of their lands. Don't know how relevant that is. I think we're going with Thalia here. And then we'll keep ticking up the vial. All right, Mirren Crusader is also a nice one. So let's attack for two. And then we'll have to decide which uh, three drop to play. We might just keep the vial on three for an extra turn just to be able to play both before we play the Restoration Angel. Drown in Sorrow. Yeah, that'll work. So it just gets rid of uh, Thalia. And then end of turn, we can put in either Blade Splicer or Mirren Crusader. I think we'll go with the Crusader, just because it has protection against spot removal. And then if our opponent tries to smallpox again, we can put Blade Splicer in play and sacrifice maybe the Blade Splicer or the Golem token. All right, we found another one, that's nice. So we'll just attack for four. And again, we could play Arbiter here, but I think we just want to keep as many cards in hand as possible. And the Arbiter is just a two mana 2-2 two -two at this point. Vampire Nighthawk, all right, did not uh, see that one coming, but I think we can handle that thanks to the first striking golems and the Mirren Crusader. So I think we'll still keep the vial at three for now 
and then we can attack with Crusader and the Golem token. End of turn, put in another Blade Splicer, and then maybe put Vile up to 4 for the Restoration Angel. If our opponent somehow could kill the Blade Splicer here, we could still put in another one to still give the Golem first strike. But I doubt our opponent wants to trade here. Alright, so our opponent's at 4. They'll need another Sweeper effect here. And then we still have a nice follow-up with Blade Splicer into Restoration Angel. Pontus Last Reckoning, alright, they did actually have the Sweeper. Alright, that's okay. And Vampire Hexmage, that's uh, pretty awkward. So they can remove all the counters from the Aether Vial, but uh, not before we get to put in a Blade Splicer here. And a Blade Splicer by itself might be good enough. Our opponent's lands are not going to untap next turn. Let's see if they get rid of the counters. They don't, and they scoop it up. Alright, so we managed to beat A-Track. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yep, this hand looks good. We've got a decent curve of creatures here. If we can find some more lands, but the Copter can also help us there. So turn one Militants. Turn two, probably Smuggler's Copter. Let's see what we're up against. Forests into... Alright. Did not expect uh, to see another Dried Militants. Their opponent could be on a mono-green aggro deck, perhaps. We might want to find our path to exile as quickly as possible. So we can attack, offer the trade, or we can keep the Smuggler's Copter on defense, since we can crew it with the Militant. I think, given that we have a lot of creatures coming up and we did find our third land, I'm fine offering the trade here. And then we can play the Copter and just try and race our opponent, since we have a a very good curve of Copter into Splicer into Angel Flickering Splicer if we can find land number 4. So we might be able to outrace even the mono green aggro deck. Let's find out. Yep, another forest into Strangle Root guys, so opponent also with their good start here. So on turn 3 we can expect a Steel Leaf Champion, which is the addition from Dominaria, or uh, maybe a Leatherback Bayloth. Those are the three drops that we can expect to see. So yeah, for now we can just play out a Blade Splicer, which does a good job of crewing the Smuggler's Copter. And we found our fourth land already. So most likely we end up discarding the Arbiter here. All right, Flicker Wisp is a nice draw. So let's get rid of the Arbiter, get in for five. And uh, Restoration Angel and Flicker Wisp can both flicker the Blade Splicer. Our opponent probably doesn't have a ton of removal in their deck, so they won't be able to interact with that. And those 3-3 uh, three, three first striking golems are going to add up. Yep, there's a Steel Leaf Champion. So our opponent with uh, 6 Devotion to Green. They could have some Green Devotion cards, but they decide to stay on defense for now, which makes sense. Can't really attack on the ground any longer, so I think we're just crewing with the Blade Splicer. Attack with the Copter, and then we can see if we want a Inspector plus Flicker Wisp, or if we want a Restoration Angel. Alright, we find a Thalia, Heredic Cathar. I think I prefer the cards in hand. Since we do want land number 4, we definitely want Flicker Wisp and Restoration Angel, and the Inspector is just a, a nice one mana play to go with the uh, Flicker Wisp. So I think we ditched Thalia here. Get in for 3 damage. And then I think we go Inspector plus Flicker Wisp. Flickering Blade Splicer. So we can't block the Steel Leaf Champion with our. Uh, Blade Splicer, so we couldn't do the trick where we block and then before damage flicker the Blade Splicer. Alright, there's a Bailoth. 3 mana, 4, 5. A lot of stats. And another Dried Militant. Alright, but the Steel Leaf Champion can't attack into the two Golem tokens here. So our opponent's in a bit of trouble and there's Path to Exile, perfect. Those are kind of all the cards we wanted. So let's crew using the Thraben Inspector since now we can block with Blade Splicer on the Bailoth and then still flicker it. Attack for 6 in the air. And we'll discard the planes here. And then we get to keep up both Restoration Angel and Path to Exile. So in case they go for some sort of bump spell to try and kill us, we can Path to Exile. If uh, 
they don't, we can just use the Restoration Angel to make an additional Golem. And we already have six Power of Flyers in place, so it's not like we need the Angel to be able to win another Steel Leaf Champion. So even more Devotion to Green might see your opponent attack with everyone. So I think our opponent has the Pump Spell that gives uh, plus X plus X, where X is their Devotion to Green. So that's the card we need to keep in mind here. But just being able to Path to Exile should be good enough here. So let's go to blocks. And I'm just gonna, I think, put all the favorable blocks we can. These are all good blocks. And then if they go for the Pump Spell, we get to Path to Exile the Steel Leaf Champion. And yep, there's the Aspect of Hydra. And we'll have the Path. And that should be game. Alright, on to sideboarding against Mono Green Stompy. Don't have a ton of cards. I guess Mirror Crusader is going to be awesome. Kitchen Finks is probably good enough. And Blast Alliance has some merits, although it's not amazing. So, not sure about the Blast Alliance. So, our best cards are our Flyers. Uh, Leonin Arbiter seems pretty poor. So, I can see taking that out. Thalia is also pretty bad. But at least it's the first striker. So, I can definitely see cutting the Arbiters. And then just bringing in Crusader, Blast Alliance, Kitchen Finks. Alright, let's uh, try it like this. Alright, this hand is okay. We've got a few flyers which are important and a decent curve if we find a third land. So we'll keep. Opponent does not have the one drop this time. We do. Alright, so really hoping we find a third land here, otherwise we're in trouble. Hash Up Oasis as well, nice addition. Strangle Root Geist. We'll be able to get in for two. All right, Thalia. So we have to choose between Thalia and Selfless Spirit here. I think I prefer playing Thalia just because it naturally blocks the Strangle Root Geist, so that prevents uh, two damage. The Geist attacks will block. If they just want to get a counter on the Geist, that's fine. If they use a Pump Spell, that's also fine. All right. So Geist is now a 3-2. And there's Avatar of the Resolute, so that was a reason for them to attack, since now the Avatar gets an extra plus one plus one counter. So a 4-3 with Reach and Trample. It's uh, pretty good here. We did miss a land, which is unfortunate, so don't have any great attacks. So we'll just play the Spirits and say go. We could have also kept up Iganjo Castle, which was reasonable, but I think I prefer developing our board. Experiment 1, and another Avatar. Alright, so... Avatar comes in play with two counters, and then the Experiment 1 triggers, and the Avatar is attacking, so we could double block and then sacrifice a Spirit to trade for the Avatar, but I think we'd rather wait. That way we can maybe prevent more damage down the line or trade for the bigger Avatar instead. And nice. Third land is awesome here, since now we get to play Blade Splicer, which adds a lot of uh, power and toughness to the board, sets up our Flicker Wisps, and now the Selfless Spirit play looks a lot more appealing. It's probably okay to attack with the Spirit here. It could prevent 2 damage or 3 damage from the Geist or the Experiment 1. But uh, we're probably going to end up sacrificing it anyways if our opponent goes for an all-out attack. And there's Steel Leaf Champion, sure. Experiment 1 now a 3-3. And no attacks, alright, that's good. So now we get to either play Flicker Wisp or Mirror Crusader. I like playing Flicker Wisp more here, I think. Put another Flyer in play, make another Golem. We do have to watch out for Aspect of Hydra, since we might not have enough blockers to block every... I kind of forgot that the Avatar had Reach, so that's a little awkward. They didn't block last turn, so maybe they also missed it. Yeah, there's no easy way to fix this. So our plan of uh, winning with our Flyers is also going to look a lot worse now. Let's play Flicker Wisp. Flicker Blade Splicer. Yeah, I don't know how we get through those Avatars now with our Flyers if our opponent just plays defense. We just need to rely on the Mirren Crusader. Strangle Root Geist, sure. Opponent's got one card left. Don't have any great attacks on the ground, so they're also just passing. 
All right, so it's time for a Mirren Crusader to shine. Could play Restoration Angel, make another Golem first, just to have more defense, but might as well do that next turn. This time we won't be attacking with our flyer into the giant reach creature. And Leatherback Baloth, opponent keeps adding more giant creatures to the board. Alright, attack with the Crusader. This one should be able to attack safely. We could go Inspector plus Flicker Wisp on the Blade Splicer or we can keep up Restoration Angel. I think I prefer Inspector plus Flicker Wisp just to put more creatures in play. Although the advantage of Restoration Angel is that it keeps up the option of representing Path to Exile. Since now if they do top deck an Aspect of Hydra they can just play it on one of their Tramplers and probably kill us. Since they have two Tramplers. If they only had one Trampler it would be different. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so the Mirror Crusader claims another victim onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this one with no colored mana is going to be difficult to keep. It's definitely tempting because we have double Ghost Quarter with Arbiter, but if we don't find the planes, immediately we aren't getting anywhere. We could Ghost Quarter our own land to find the planes, but that's not where we want to be. And with only 15 white sources and one draw step to get there, I don't like those odds. So let's go to 6. And this hand's a bit better, so let's keep. And Thalia is probably worth keeping here. We would prefer a land, but how bad is a turn to Thalia? It's pretty good, so we'll keep it. So turn 1 Inspector. Opponent with the turn 1 Swamp. Does nothing. Let's attack for 1. And play a Thalia. And then if we miss on a land drop we can still sacrifice our clue to try and find a land. Up against the Black Green with a tapped Overgrown Tomb. Alright, find an Arbiter. That's uh, probably worth playing here. So let's attack for three. They can't Fatal Push because of Thalia. So if they were holding on to any fetch lands, they get punished. Just a basic forest. And Heartless Summoning for three mana. Okay, so this could be the Black Green kind of Heartless Summoning uh, Gitrog Monster value deck. So Planes is a nice draw. We can Flicker Wisp the Thraben Inspector after attacking with it to get some value, or we can just play Blade Splicer first, which is probably better. So let's attack for five. Getting the Flyer in play is relevant, but I think getting an extra Golem token is probably worth it here. So let's see what uh, big payoff is here after playing the Heartless Summoning. So they can play a 5 drop here if they wanted to. Maybe even a 6 drop if they have a, another untapped land. Alright, and there's Opnixilus, the Fallen. So just a 2-2 because of the Heartless Summoning. But with a landfall it will get uh, 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters and we lose 3 life. So it's already a 5-5. Five five. But Flicker Wisp can get rid of Opnixilus for a turn. And they're gonna Ghost Quarter the planes, I see. So they're gonna use their own Leonin Arbiter against us to prevent us from playing cards like Flicker Wisp. So we're not gonna be able to search. Dried Militant to draw. So what happens if we attack with everyone? Our opponent blocks the Golem token, takes uh, 6 down to 5, and then we could add a Dried Militant to the board. I think I still prefer sacrificing a clue and then hope to draw a planes and then we can still play the militant. Alright, found a copter instead. So we could make a big attack here, sacrifice the golem essentially to get in for 6 points of damage. That's probably worth it here. Put the opponent low enough where we can finish them off with a copter. So our opponent's at 5. And there's a Tireless Tracker for just one mana. And a Ramanap Excavator. Oof, they can get back Ghost Quarter and take us off of another land. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Our Leonin Arbiter working against us. Now we just want to find any land to play the Copter, but I guess uh, Thalia also taxes the Copter, so we either need to sacrifice Thalia somehow 
The bright side of Heartless Summoning is that the opponent's creatures are pretty small. So even if your opponent has Fatal Push, they can't cast it because of Thalia. So we definitely can't attack with everyone, otherwise we risk dying on the way back. We can attack with Thalia and Arbiter, put them to 1, add a Dried Militant to the board, and then try to kill them next turn. That seems okay. Opponent just takes it, falls to 1. And we'll play Dried Militants. And hope that we can survive. And then maybe sneak in a win next turn. Opponent gets back Ghost Quarter. I guess what they can do is just Ghost Quarter themselves. So they're gonna Ghost Quarter themselves to get a land. And then the Oponixil's trigger is gonna kill us. Alright, close game. We were missing a vital path to exile. And of course, our opponent using Ghost Quarter against us didn't really work in our favor. Alright, on to sideboarding. So how do we want to approach this? Mirren Crusader seems like an easy addition. I don't mind bringing in a Relic of Progenitus, just to prevent those ramming up Excavator loops. Um, Disenchant for Heartless Summoning might be okay. Could be a bit narrow. I think we've learned that uh, Leonin Arbiter might not be the best idea. But then again, our opponent does have a few fetch lands as well. So maybe it's still worth it to keep the Arbiter and just hope we have an Aether Vial. Dried Militant seems pretty poor. And I can see cutting a Thalia. Since your opponent's mostly creatures. And then maybe we shave two Inspectors. This seems okay. And this hand doesn't have any white mana. And doesn't have any either Vials. So let's go to six. Alright, I'll keep this. And Ghost Quarter is interesting since that does combine with the Arbiter. I think we're bottoming the Ghost Quarter here. So turn two we'll play the Copter. Could have played the Arbiter here, but our opponent uh, recognizes that they should play their fetch lands right away. So they might not have any fetch lands left in hand anyways. And I would rather get the Copter in play as soon as possible so we can crew it next turn. No Heartless Summoning, so our opponent might be keeping up a Fatal Push. And there's Aether Vial, so we could neglect to crew the Copter here out of fear of a Fatal Push, since next turn our opponent probably has to tap out for a creature and then we can hit them with the Copter, since I don't imagine our opponent keeps a hand that doesn't have Summoning or Fatal Push. So let's play the Vial. Play the Arbiter. And we're fine if they... Fatal push the Arbiter here. You could argue that we should have kept the Vial in hand since we might want to discard it to the Copter. But as we've learned last game, our opponent is running quite a few Ghost Quarters themselves. So we might uh, need the Vial to cast Angel if they mess with our lands. As it turns out, they have Abrupt Decay for the Vial, so they're not concerned about the Copter, meaning they probably have the Fatal Push. And yep, there's a Ghost Quarter as well. Kills our lands. So our opponent's keeping up Fatal Push. What we could do is crew the Copter, attack with Arbiter. If they Fatal Push, we get to Ghost Quarter them, since then they don't have two mana up to pay for Ghost Quarter. We're probably never gonna cast the Restoration Angel, then is a problem. Or we can just attack with Arbiter and keep up Ghost Quarter. If they push Arbiter, we can also Ghost Quarter them. Yeah, I think we just attack with Arbiter here. I think losing the Copter would be too much of a setback. So our opponent takes two, we'll say go, and they're kind of forced to play around this Ghost Quarter. A fetch land is uh, not great for them, so let's untap. Alright, there's a land, so if we crew the Copter and they Fatal Push it, we could flicker with Restoration Angel to save the Copter, which would be okay. Or we can just attack with Arbiter, keep up Angel. Opponent's gonna pay two for the Arbiter, and then we can flicker the Arbiter, essentially forcing them to pay two again. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out, so let's play the lands, attack for two, and then if your opponent pays for Arbiter end of turn to sacrifice the Delta, we can flicker the Arbiter in response, and then the Arbiter will become a new instance of the Arbiter, which means they have to pay two once again. So we're gonna wait for them to sacrifice a fetch land, and then we're gonna flicker the Arbiter with Restoration Angel, essentially destroying the fetch land that's currently on the stack. Nice. So there's a lot of tricky things you can do with 
Arbiter and Flicker effects. So now we have an Angel in play. Alright, another Polluted Delta. Let's see if they uh, pay for it right away or if they keep it up once again. Alright, they're gonna keep it up. Alright, so now I think we're at the point where Leonin Arbiter might be more valuable than the Copter. So I'm gonna crew tapping the Arbiter and uh, see what the opponent wants to do here. If they want to kill the Copter or if they want to kill the Arbiter. Opponent pays for Arbiter, sacrifices the Delta. Opponent will get to search up a land and Fatal push the Copter. So that works. Still get to hit them for three with the Restoration Angel. And then I think we just let them untap. We could upkeep, use Ghost Quarter, force them to tap two mana. Yeah, that might actually be okay since then we get another attack for five damage in. The downside is if our opponent has another Fatal Push, they get Revolt enabled because of our own Ghost Quarter and they can kill the Angel. So I think we just let them untap and do their thing. And I'm not gonna use the Ghost Quarter quite yet. So if they do get to resolve a three drop if they want to, they take two from uh, Overgrown Tomb for Oracle of Moldaya, so they can play additional lands and play with the top card revealed. And if the top card is a land, of course, they can uh, play it. So Heartless Summoning on top. They're gonna play Fetch Land. We can go Scorder them now if we want to, take them off of Overgrown Tomb. It seems okay. So that's gone. Opponent also doesn't get to shuffle. So the summoning is still on top. And I think we just attack with both. I'm fine trading Arbiter for the Oracle here. Opponent is as well. So your opponent's down to five. They can fetch freely now. So that means if they fetch, the Heartless Summoning is gone. Looks like they want to keep the summoning, but we have the Disenchant. Maelstrom Pulse on the Angel instead. All right, so now we're kind of on empty. We know our opponent drew the Heartless Summoning, so we've got that going for us. And Mirror Crusader. Hello, it's not a bad one. So I'm gonna play the land in case we need to disenchant. If our opponent messes up their sequencing and plays summoning before the fetch land, then uh, we might be able to kill the summoning before they take advantage of it. Alright, they play the summoning. So let's see what they play here. Wayward Swordtooth. So in response we can kill the summoning to prevent them from playing any other three drops. Swordtooth resolves. They get to play additional lands if they want to, but they only have one card left in hand. And we'll get in for four. Put them to one. And say go. All right, we got there. So on to game three against the green-black Heartless Summoning deck. Do we want to reconsider anything? I think I like our configuration here. The uh, Disenchant wasn't amazing. It's probably good enough. Can also kill a clue token. This hand's probably a keep just because we have Mirren Crusader in it. Turn one Inspector, turn two Spirit, turn three Crusader. All right, opponent has Inquisition, so they're gonna mess with our hand, taking the Crusader is my guess. So let's play Inspector. Path to Exile could be a nice draw here as well. Nothing on turn two. So let's attack for one. And I think we play Ghost Quarter, play Self of Spirit. We could have played Arbiter here, but I think I wanna wait and next turn go Arbiter plus Ghost Quarter to kind of catch them off guard. Since if we play Arbiter now and our opponent has their own Ghost Quarter, they could mess with our mana and uh, put us in a difficult situation. All right, there's a Ghost Quarter and there's a Wayward Swordtooth. Do they have an additional land? They do, another Ghost Quarter. Hmm, that makes it uh, difficult to tap out for our Leonin Arbiter here. So the good thing about Aether Vial is that it kind of offsets the opponent's Ghost Quarters if they use them with our Arbiter in play. Let's start by attacking. And I think we're just playing a Vial. And saying go. I think uh, playing Arbiter here would be a bit too dangerous. Maybe next turn. There's an Inquisition, so we could path the Wayward Swordtooth. Don't think we want to do that. They do indeed take the path. So your opponent knows about Arbiter, so they're going to have to be very careful not to tap out. I guess they have an Excavator now, so they can just replay their lands from the graveyard. So yeah, playing Arbiter now would be kind of suicidal. Let's uh, sack a clue, find another Ghost Quarter. Take up the Vial. Alright, alright, so now we've got something going here. We can path the Excavator after playing the Arbiter, and then we can still Ghost Quarter. Opponent can also go scorder, but I don't think we care at this point. 
So I think we want to lead with Arbiter. Opponent's probably going to fetch in response. And then we can go Plains Path. And we want to do that pre-combat so we can attack with the Inspector. So our opponent's fetching in response. Probably getting another Overgrown Tomb. Arbiter resolves. And now we're going to path the Excavator. Opponent doesn't get to search for the path. That guy's exiled and we get to attack for three. Then the question remains, do we use Ghost Quarter on anything? We can also Ghost Quarter their Overgrown Tomb to cut them off of double green, which could be relevant. Yeah, I don't mind our opponent killing all our lands here. So I'm okay using the Ghost Quarter on the Overgrown Tomb. That works, and we'll find out if our opponent wants to return the favor or not. They don't. The Gitrog Monster, oof. Alright, the Gidrock Monster resolves, so we definitely don't want to Ghost Quarter them now, otherwise they get to draw cards with the Gidrock Monster. We'll take up the Vile, so now we're desperately looking for Flyers, and there's a Smuggler's Copter, which will do nicely, so let's attack for two with the Spirits. So your opponent will be sacrificing their own lands to the Gidrock Monster to draw extra cards, essentially. Let's see here, I guess we can keep up the Ghost Quarter just in case. And I don't think we're playing out the Ghost Quarter in our hand. We've got the Vile anyways. Alright, so it's a race between the Gidrog Monster and our Flyers. Opponent drawing two cards a turn, but they are sacrificing lands. And now with the Ramen Up Excavator gone, they don't get to replay them. Alright, never mind. Don't think we're doing anything in response here. Opponent sacks Ghost Quarter, killing our planes. Opponent draws a card with a Gidrog. Gets back a Ghost Quarter. And uses another Ghost Quarter on the Plains. Get back a Swamp. And Fatal Push on Selfless Spirits. That's annoying. I guess we might as well sacrifice here. That way we can block the Gitterrock Monster. Could have also crewed in response in case our opponent attacked. Then we could also loot with the Copter, but I don't think our opponent's attacking here. Alright, let's untap. And I think we do take up the Vile. Tectonic Edge doesn't do us any favors here. Alright, Relic of Progenitus is a nice one, so let's discard a Ghost Quarter. So we could play Relic and sacrifice it immediately. That's probably worth it. Opponent still gets to use Ghost Quarter and replay Ghost Quarter. But at least they don't get to play multiple lands unless they have more fetch lands in hand. Draw Mirror Crusader, which we can vial in end of turn. Alright, so we're kind of doing it here. Hmm, I think we actually messed up. We should have used the Relic activation. Alright, so our opponent's going to force the issue here. So what we should have done is actually use Relic after our opponent sacrificed the land to the Gitrog monster before they were able to play the land with the Ramen Up Excavator. Alright, so we're forced to play out the Crusader here. Which, uh, together with the Copter, is enough to kill our opponent. But they will be drawing some extra cards here, so who knows what will happen. Although I guess if our opponent waited to respond to their own trigger with the Abrupt Decay, we would have been forced to sacrifice a Relic in the hopes of drawing into something like a Crusader, so we could Vial in the Crusader, and then the land would not be in the graveyard yet. So if our opponent did exactly the things in the same sequence here, then I guess the land would still be in their graveyard anyways. They're uh, getting rid of our lands, kind of getting used to that now. Clicking yes in the hopes that we somehow still get to find a land, but we don't. So our opponent will get to draw a whole bunch of extra cards here. And our hope is that they don't find an answer to the Crusader. Kitchen Things, alright, that gains them uh, 2 life, so they go up to 7. Still that to Crusader and Copter. They might have a Fatal Push for the Copter. We're still at 20, and they can't really attack into the Crusader all that well. It's on top. Inspector, so... I think we make them show us the Fatal Push here, and then Crusader still kills them in two turns. So let's crew. And attack for seven. Might as well loot. And do they have the Fatal Push? They do. Alright, so they still take four. And we might as well keep the planes in hand since they're going to destroy it anyways. Alright, so can the opponent find an answer to Mirren Crusader? We'll find out shortly. 
they could also, if they have more fatal pushes, kill their own kitchen things to gain two life, to stay alive for another turn. Opponent gets back a forest, gets back a swamp, so now the Wayward Swordtooth can attack. Alright, opponent's attacking with everyone. I think we're just chomping the Gitrog monster here, preserve our life total. So we're down to 10. Opponent goes quarters themselves, just to draw extra cards. Opponent's got 7 cards in hand. I imagine they'll find something here to gain some life with the Kitchen Things or play another Kitchen Things. Oracle of Moldaya still doesn't do it. There's a fetch line on top. They play it, so they have a way to enable Revolt to gain two life, but if they use the fetch land, then they would also go down to two, back up to four, and still die to the Mirren Crusader. So that doesn't do it. All right, we're attacking with the Mirren Crusader here. Don't have any other options, and uh, hope we get there. Abrupt Decay, all right, that works. That's uh, not a fail push. So your opponent gains two, goes to one, we can still block the Gitrog monster on the way back. And then if they don't have removal for the Thraben Inspector, we would only be taking... Well, I guess we would be taking 11, so we're still dead. So their opponent had the Abrupt Decay instead of the Fatal Push. So they didn't have to pay the one life with the Fatch Land to enable Revolt. And still able to kill their own kitchen things to gain two life. So that's uh, well played by the opponent. Alright, I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.